Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. My name is Joe and uh, right now I'm currently standing in front of my EQ6 with my Z81 cameraless, but uh, I do have the camera. It's just over in my observatory. I got to go get it. I'm going to be using this tonight for another project, but the video, uh, today's video is really about uh, a question that I had and that is, have you ever seen uh, somebody else's image that they took that of a target that you didn't even know existed. And when you did see it, you said, oh, I got to shoot that. Well, if, if this sounds familiar, then you could relate to what happened to me last weekend. Watch, check this out. Hi, guys. Hey. Hi, guys. How are you? Really good. How are you, Joe? You good? Doing well, yeah. So is that right. the image Hi, you messaged us about? Yeah, recently? yeah. Thanks for joining me. I'm having a bit of an issue, as you can see, with the, the banding. And I was just wanting yeah. to pick your brains. Any ideas what might be called it, causing it? Mm, what do you reckon, Joe? It looks it looks like a light leak or infrared light to me. Mm, yeah, it could be actually. What what uh, filter is it on, uh, Russell? It, it's only on the red filter, so it's not coming up on an, any other filter, just the red. Ooh, so I will bet it's another red light. Do you have any red? Yeah, lights? it could be a red light. Have you got any red yeah. lights on your rig? Um, only on the ASI Air. There's a small flashing light, so potentially oh, could okay. be that. Have you got the ASI here? Where, where else is the um, light? Can you... I've not got not got it on me, no. I, I could go and get it, though. Yeah, go grab it and we'll have a quick look at it. Okay, cool. I'll grab it. Yeah, we'll have a look at what you're imaging. Dude, look at that galaxy. Wow, that's really cool. Dude, I've never seen that galaxy before. What's it called? I don't know, but I like it. That's... I'm stealing that. I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. We'll have to we'll have to get it out before he finishes it. Let's steal it. Yeah. Let's yeah. Oh. <laughs> what are you guys stealing? Um. No. We <laughs> thought. Uh. Would you? Oh, that's a lovely galaxy. Would you yeah. like to do a collab? Yeah. We thought we maybe maybe we could do a collab on that galaxy with you. As long as I'm included on it. Yeah. Yeah. Not with that filter though. <laughs> <laughs> so we came out to the observatory and the, we had a terrible windstorm the last couple days and everything's dusty and i i've had some previous viewers um let me know that i should be covering this up with a sheet or something and they're not wrong but trust me it's it can get really bad here uh, the problem is, is that when I got to get up early for work in the morning, um, I just have, I got to take off. Uh, and what I really need to start doing is, is just waking up early and coming down here and getting the sheet over this, um, just in case the wind decides to, to go crazy. So I've been sitting here with my, with my flats t-shirt trying to dust everything off. But uh, yeah, it's pretty bad. So I'm gonna have to work on that a little bit tonight before I get started. But I think the first thing I'm gonna do is um, get this in a parked position and, and also open up the roof for tonight's session. And then I gotta change some configurations on the scope. So while I'm getting this open, I'm gonna go ahead and open up the roof. And this spring's been really hard on me for the observatory. I've had uh, mice try and get in here. Uh, I've had uh, the yellow jacket wasps coming in. So I'm gonna have to change up some stuff in here and, and do a few other things. Um, I'm gonna continue to try and wipe down some of this dust. Um, dust can really be your enemy when it comes to anything mechanical like this. Um, so while I'm here, I wanted to talk about so our target tonight is NGC 3718 and it's in the constellation Ursa Major, which is kind of cool because that's already kind of where we're pointed. <laughs> and uh, it's about 52 million light years away and it's got this really cool S shape to it. And I've noticed in some images of it from looking it up that if you take some longer exposures, uh, you can get a lot more of that S shape to come out around the edges. So I'm gonna try and do that for my part anyway of the collaboration. And I'm gonna change this up a little bit. So right now I'm at full focal length. And what I need to do is go ahead and get the um, 0.7 reducer on here. Now I would 
you know, if it was just me taking it, I think I would try and go for the full focal length. However, um, I, in my collaboration with Russell and Glenn, I believe Russell's going to be around a thousand millimeter focal length and Glenn's going to be around 1200. Now with the reducer, I'll still be at 1420 millimeters. So I'm also going to be using the uh, ZWO ASI 2600 on this because that gives me even a larger field of view. And what I'm really trying to do is just match up their field of views. And then we can crop in if we need to. They're going to have to heavily crop in on my field of view as it is. So if I went to the native focal length of 2032 millimeters, uh, I'm not quite sure we'd be able to use everyone's data. And you know, the goal in the collaboration is to combine all of our data together. I'm gonna keep uh, cleaning everything and switch over the reducer. And then by that time it should be dark and we can start our imaging session. So I'll see you in just a little while as I clean up. So it's almost time to get started. I'm starting to see some stars come out. So I'm gonna get my sequence loaded in. Uh, I'm gonna be doing 180 second luminance exposures. And I think that that might be a little too bright for the core of the galaxy. However, I really wanna capture that outer edge of the galaxy where um, it curls over on itself on either end of what looks like an S curve. And I think that's really cool. And I'm hoping that what happens is, is that with my outer edges, I can kind of uh, in post-processing combine my center with Glenn's and Russell's so that we're not blowing out the center of the galaxy, but we're also getting that outer edge of the S curve. Uh, I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be kind of overexposing, sorry, I'm gonna kind of be overexposing in RGB as well. Uh, I'm gonna be doing 300 second exposures in that. And I think that the blue and the green might bring out a little bit more of that outer edge. I'm not sure about the red, but we'll find out. But if anything else, the red, if there is any HA, will bring that out. I'm not gonna be shooting any HA. Um, I don't think there's a lot of it. I'm not positive. And I don't really know if Russell or Glenn are gonna be trying any HA either. Um, but I think that overall, the images that I've seen online of, of this galaxy, I haven't seen any with any uh, HA in it. So I think I'm pretty good just to go with LRGV. Uh, later on in the evening, uh, well, the night, the morning, uh, next morning, about one, two in the morning, it's supposed to start to get cloudy a little bit. And I do have to get up for work in the morning, so I'm not gonna really be monitoring anything. I am gonna set my camera up to be doing some uh, time lapse and I'll see if the clouds come through on that. Uh, but yeah, I might just be shooting images of clouds about one or 2 a.m. and I won't know it till I get up in the morning. So wish me luck and we'll see how that goes. I just wanted to take a moment and show everyone some of the hard work that goes into these collaborations as well. What I normally do when we decide to start a collaboration is, is that I make a shared Google Drive and then everyone who's involved in the collaboration will put their files into that shared drive and then I'll take those files, I or someone else in the collaboration will, will combine all the files together, we'll register them all together, we star align all of the files and then we start the cropping process and merging all of them together so that we only have single combined master files left. And I just wanted to show you that when you're normally used to working with just one file or maybe up to four, if you're doing a luminance and red, green, blue image, um, this is how many files that I work with when we're doing a collaboration between three people. And so I just thought it was interesting to, to show that because a lot of hard work goes into these. And I also wanted to show you what our combined luminance looked like after we finally uh, star aligned and registered everything together. And I just thought it was really interesting and I love the way that we didn't end up uh, blowing out the center of the galaxy. Uh, and we also got some of this S curve that comes around the outside. So I was really happy about that. Also, in this image, we managed to capture some other galaxies, which is pretty cool. 
Um, we got NGC 3718, which is our center focus galaxy. And then we also got NGC 3729, which is actually an interacting galaxy with NGC 3718. Um, more impressively though, we got the Hickson 56 group off to the side of our main galaxy and that group is estimated to be about 425 million light years away from Earth. And so I thought it was really neat that we were able to capture um, three pretty main targets into, into one frame. So oddly enough, when I was talking with Glenn and Russell, Glenn had actually uh, did this challenge a while back when he went to an ast astronomy show with some other YouTubers about doing a slow motion run into your video. And I kept trying to figure out how I was going to incorporate that slow motion run in my video. And um, as I, luck would have it, maybe it's luck, maybe it's bad luck. Um, I got attacked by a yellow jacket wasp for, for inside the observatory, so I came running out, and that gave me the idea to actually uh, recreate it and shoot it for the video so that um, I can come up with my slow motion run for Glenn. So there you go, Glenn. Challenge accepted and conquered, I believe. <laughs> so it's been about two weeks since we started this collaboration together, and in the meantime, I've asked my friend Kurt from AstroQuest One actually posted an image of the same galaxy on Instagram. And I thought, oh man, if I'd have known, I would have asked him to join our collaboration. But it was a really nice image. And that really got my hopes up high too, seeing his image, you know, thinking that um, at least our image was going to be pretty decent, even if it, it was even close to his quality that we would have a pretty nice image and after working with the guys for a while it turned out that it was a pretty difficult target to process um, for whatever reason when I would just process my data it would come out okay and when, and when I would process the other guy's data it would come out okay but when I put it all together we were really running into lots of issues and struggles and but finally we did it um, it just took a lot of extra work, more than I would have liked, but it was worth it in the end. Um, I'm really, really impressed with our image, and it was fantastic working with you, Russell and Glenn, again. Uh, unfortunately, we still never got to use Russell's uh, red filter data, but I'm pretty sure that he figured out the issue that he was having, and so in the future we will get to see um, some red filter data from Russell. Uh, make sure you check out his video um, to see how everything turned out on his end, as well as Glenn's. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.